Bismillah. Welcome to Resilient Leader. Now, as you know from the name, we are trying to build resilient leaders. Psychology, emotionally, spiritually, physically. That's the aim of this page. Now, there's many pages out there and everyone's going to teach you their own things. And that's great for them. But on this one, we're trying to teach you things that are practical, things that I myself am doing, and things that many people of the past have done and that we can learn from. There's no point of going through all the hardships of life when many people before you have done the same thing you're doing today. And all you have to do is read a book, take some notes and put it into practice. There are thousands of books talking about spirituality, talking about success in money, success networking and all these other fields. The problem is a lot of people read books but don't implement it. So it's not that there's not enough knowledge. There's a lot of knowledge out there. The problem is a lot of people read maybe for entertainment, maybe for pleasure. They don't read to actually implement and better their life. So that's what we want to do with this page. So from the outset, we're going to be going through a book called The Common Denominator of Success. And we're going to try to take three points just on some of the notes that I've taken personally that hopefully you benefit from. So the first one that we're going to go through is he says in his book, the successful men are influenced by the desire for pleasing results. I say that again, the successful men are influenced by the desire for pleasing results, meaning the end is what's important to a successful man. It's not how much money did we lose. It's not how many you know ups and downs did we have. It's not the methods. Did you do it this way? Did you do it that way? It's none of that. It's what's the product? How can we win? Did we win? What's the service? How are we gonna get it to the people? Did we win? And winning meaning, did we make a profit? Did we make allowances? to make sure at least we broke even and you didn't make a loss. So successful people are always thinking about what's the end goal? How did we gain at the end? We're not bothered about the methods because as you heard before, there's the saying what? There's plenty of ways to skin a cat, meaning there's many ways to do things in life. Don't be too, you know, rigid about a path to get to success. If I told you go from here and go all the way to Birmingham, there's many ways to get to that place. Someone might take a slower path, someone might take a quicker path, someone might take a mediocre path, whichever path, either way at the end, the results is we won. So that's the first thing to keep in mind. Successful men are influenced by the desire for pleasing results. Second one he says is, why are successful men able to do things they don't like to do while failures are not? And the answer is because successful men have a purpose strong enough to make them form the habit of doing things they don't like to do in order to accomplish the purpose they want to accomplish. Meaning the successful person has the same issue as the failure person. But what's the difference? The successful man has a purpose strong enough to make them form the habit of doing things they don't like to do. So it's just a matter of having a stronger what? Resilience, willingness, determination to succeed in what they want to accomplish because the purpose is higher than the person who is a failure. So for example, someone might want to go gym. Yeah, they're both the same. They're both 12 kg. Let's call them both. Jamal, Jamal, both are 12 kg and they're going gym. One's purpose might be, you know what? My dad was obese and he died. And so... I'm never going to be like that. And I want to make sure I fulfill my dad's dreams. So he's put like a deep purpose inside him. So he makes sure he's going gym every day. The days that he's tired, the days that he's over it, the days that he's had a late night sleep, the day that he's got uni, whatever it may be, the purpose in his brain is so vivid that he wants to accomplish that. Whereas the other Jamal, you know, he might be living a good life. He hasn't really gone through any hardship maybe. And there isn't really a big resolve in him. It's just, mm, I want to be a fit person. So he goes to gym once, twice, three times a week, maybe for a month. Then he starts to slow down because maybe he might have a new wife. Maybe he might be very busy at work. Wherever the circumstances that he tells himself, he starts to cut down on his gym time. So what happens? The person who had the higher purpose succeeds. The person who didn't have the high purpose fails so what he's telling you here is the one who has the higher purpose the one who has the higher conviction usually is the one who succeeds so what you need to do with yourself is have a higher conviction link your purpose with a higher conviction a higher purpose then you will what succeed and the third one that we want to go through he says which is basically what i've said now actually funny enough he says make it 
as in like the um, the purpose that you're doing make it a purpose of the sentimental or emotional type remember needs are logical while wants and desires are sentimental and emotional your needs will push you just so far but when your needs are satisfied they will stop pushing you an example of this could be food we all want to eat food right it's a need not the obese type but there's a natural need to eat to fulfill your stomach the hunger but once you eat you have fulfilled what you desired to you know go about so that's finished now what's the next one i want to sleep you've slept you fulfilled the desire of what sleeping so he's saying to you here when you have a purpose though the purpose has to be such that it's sentimental it's emotional i want to be rich so i can help all the poor people in the world and that there's no more poor person in the world that's a high aspirational thing to have and you've linked it to an emotion maybe you was poor once upon a time you're like i was poor once i never want to be poor again and i don't want to see anyone else poor so you're linking a sentimental thing an emotional thing to a high aspiration that will make you more likely to succeed than to just say oh you know what i want to feed poor people around the world and i really love it just because i just don't want to see poor people in the world no more there's not a high emotional connection with that it's not sentimental it's just eh, i want to help someone if you don't get to help that person is not the end of the world so with these three things i hope you've learned that the main thing you should get from this is a lot of it has to do with deep conviction a lot of it has to do with deep emotion attached to a an idea attached to a success and a lot of it has to do with what resilience that's why this page is called resilient leader you understand have resilience have conviction in whatever field you want to do you'll get there i'm not the one that's going to tell you here do all of this stuff you're going to be a millionaire everything in life is written for everyone there's people who do all of this stuff they don't become a millionaire but they're successful in their own right you know they're content with their own life at least every day you leave your house and you're trying to be successful that in itself is success let's not compare ourselves to people who are millionaires billionaires people who smile all the time people who dress nice all the time people who drive cars all the time don't compare yourself to that once you start doing a comparison game you've lost the game you need to play is stay in your own lane keep developing every day become a better person every day and ultimately that the path itself is success do you understand helps and i'll catch you on the next one peace